there we go folks thanks for clicking on the video today I'm going to be doing a video review of the HW99S um, the reason I'm doing this video is because I got the rifle for Christmas um, I bought it out of my own money so any views I give on it will be entirely my own um, I'm always advising people to buy this rifle and I've, it occurred to me that I'd never actually used one before so about time I got myself one so I did just that so without further ado I'll get into the review and um, Happy New Year Alright so just to give you a few facts about the gun um, this model here is um, a late 2017 model and it's in 177 cal um, they retail for about 200 to 240 quid depending on where you buy them from or which part of the country you are uh, I live down in the West Country, so that's about the going rate for them where I am. Um, the S in the 99S, it stands for Sport, as it's a sporting rifle. Um, the overall length of the rifle, unmoderated, is 1,050mm, or 41.3 inches if you prefer. Um, the actual barrel length is 410mm, or 16.1 inches if you prefer and the barrel diameter is 15.5 millimeters at the very end because there's like a groove on the very end of the barrel which allows the foresight to, to clip on so the rest of the barrel is 15 millimeters in diameter but the very end is 15 and a half and I learned that the hard way because this is the first uh, silencer adapter I brought for the rifle I don't know if you can see that. Camera's not focusing properly, but that's a 15 millimeter uh, moderator adapter. And um, I had to get a new one that was 15.5. Uh, so, yeah, the barrel diameter, as I said, is uh, 15 millimeters, but it's 15.5 at the very end. Um, the unscoped weight of the rifle is 3.2 kilograms, or 7 pounds if you prefer. Um, the stock is uh, beechwood only, and it's ambidextrous, and it's made by Minelli. There's a little sign down in the corner of the, uh, the pistol grip that indicates it comes from Minelli. And there's a uh, laser etching on it, etching, sorry, and a H, uh, sorry, Virac logo as well. Um, they come in 177 and 22. I think that's all you get for it. And out of the box, you get a, uh, a one-piece tunnel foresight and a multi-adjustable rear sight as standard. Now, as you can see, I've um, removed all of that, and the rifle isn't standard uh, out of the box looking. Uh, the internals are, but the actual rifle itself is. I've, um, I've removed all of the iron sights and put a silencer on there, and obviously um, a one-piece scope mount and a hawk side winder uh, TAC 30 scope just because it's what I had kicking about um, it comes with a, a 9 to 11 metre uh, rail scope oh sorry, a uh, scope rail um, and there's also three rester pins so under here there's uh, little grooves for the scope mount to screw down into so that it uh, stops it from, from shifting which is really helpful because there is a fair bit of kick to the rifle and obviously it comes with the um, record two-stage adjustable trigger and it has an automatic cross bolt safety so when you cock the rifle the safety comes on and you have to release it in order to fire which I think is always uh, a nice touch and obviously it comes with a rubber recoil butt pad as well and there is the option to buy a, a Virac aftermarket push-on moderator um, but unfortunately it retails for about 70 quid so minus the fact that I had to buy my uh, moderator adapter twice it would have only cost me um, I think it was about eight pound they were about eight pound each so obviously I already had a silencer kicking around so it's a little bit different from 70 quid so I'll just move the rifle around a bit so you can get a bit of a better view View of the other side, shall I say? And um, in a minute, I'll just cut to 
some some footage of me testing the rifle out with a chronograph and with a um, decibel meter. I think you'll agree it's quite a pretty looking rifle. The bluing's a nice finish and so is the stock. Got some nice grains on it there. So yeah, I'll um I'll cut to some footage now of the rifle being tested. Right, so I'm just gonna do a bit of sound testing with the rifle. Um when I first got it and fired off the few shots, first few shots in my backyard and I thought it was a bit loud. I was expecting it to be quiet, but it is actually um it's quite loud. It's about the same as any normal springer really, but as you can see, I've got a decibel meter. So I'll do two shots with it, uh, without it suppressed, and then I'll do two shots with it suppressed. As you can see, the ambient noise level today is around about 45 decibels. So I'll just get set up. Right, so I'll fire off a shot into me garden, or into me grass, should I say. And let you see the reading. So I'll hold the rifle, um, say about arm's length away from the decibel meter. So I think that went up to a hundred and hundred point six decibels. As you can see, to cop the rifles, uh, the noise is around about seventy decibels, and to close it back up again is about the same. Releasing the safety takes it up to 64. Again, second shot into the grass. 100.6 decibels. Right, so I'll screw on the moderator and the moderator that I'm using is a Swift Stumpy just because it's a short one just to keep the length down. Because when you add the moderator it does increase the length of the rifle unfortunately right so I've got that screwed on tight <clears throat> right so first shot and oh sorry suppressed 91.2 Second shot, 90.4. So if you look, as I said before, the ambient noise level, is, excuse me, is around about 45 decibels. When I'm talking, it's around about 63. And then without it suppressed, it's 100 decibels. And with it suppressed, it's 90. So still in a pretty sociable noise level you know considering i'm in my backyard with this rifle most of the time i don't want it to be too loud so it's not a massive difference but it's better than nothing plus i think it makes the rifle look a bit prettier so i've uh i've got the chronograph out i'm just going to do a 10 shot string um the pellets that i'm using are air arms diablo field 8.4 grains as i said well, I haven't said sorry, but the internals on this rifle are completely standard at the minute, and the rifle is brand new. Oh. So, I haven't even put 100 shots through it yet. So, I'm hoping the consistency is good. <coughs> right, so shot one. Seven hundred and fifty six point nine shot two seven hundred and sixty. Seven hundred and sixty again. Seven hundred and 
So again, this is a brand new rifle, had less than 100 shots through it, and it's looking pretty consistent. 753, so 7 feet per second less, or deviation there. So, shot 5, 758. So we're still around about 760. Shot six. 743 760 again, and then shot 10, one last shot, Seven hundred and fifty-two. Right, so real quickly, here's the results from the chronograph test, um, as you can see 760 was the average, um, it appeared three times bang on in the 10 shot string, and then as good as twice, um, what I did is I went on to um, the Pyramid Air website and I used their little uh, formula device as it were to um, figure out what the uh, rifle's energy is so I typed in 8.44 grain and uh, 760 feet per second because that was the average from the 10 shot string and that equated to 10.83 foot pounds of energy um, I did some pellet testing the other day, and you have to excuse the spelling for the word fields, <laughs> but I've uh, concluded that Air Arms Field, JSB Heavy, and HNN FTT were what the pellet, uh, sorry, the rifle prefers. But this could all change because the rifle's brand new still, hasn't had many shots through it, so once it's bedded in, things could change. But I, I, I went with Air Arms Field Diablos to do the testing with, and. Um, as I say, it came out at 10.83 foot pounds, which I'm happy with. If you look at other information and all sources of information on the net and YouTube videos, you'll see that uh, it's you know it's generally what the rifle produces out of the box, and I'm happy with 10. Point, you know 83 because it could change or go up or down or whatever in the future. But um, just to point out as well, you may have noticed during the quantograph testing the sound of the rifle changed. Um, towards the end it sounded hell of a lot different to what it did at the start it was more rattly and the reason for that is because I had a sound um, well sorry a silencer adapter uh, arrive in the post today um, and in my haste to get it all set up I didn't screw it on tight enough so it came loose during the end of the testing so that rattling sound was that and my fault it wasn't the rifle or the internals or anything I just thought I'd point that out in case anybody noticed. And if you didn't, if you go back and watch it now, you, you will this time. So, yeah, that's the results from the chronograph. So, after owning the rifle for about a week or two now, um, I think it's fair to say I can give an opinion of it. And I think it's a cracking little rifle that's got great amount of uses. Like, the, the things you can do with it. It's, it's a sporting rifle, so... You can take it hunting because it's full powered. You can um, use it for target practice. Um, I've spoken to people online and in forums and they've said that with this pretty much this setup, they've entered HFT competitions and, and done really well. And it's extremely affordable. You don't have to put a big expensive scope, uh, scope on it, sorry. You can just use it as it comes out of the box and you know it'll still be a great laugh. Um, so, 
you get a lot of money, uh, sorry, a lot of rifle for your money. It's, you know, it's a great bit of kit. And I think the build quality is great and it will last forever if you look after it because it's a Virac, so it's just the way they are. Um, the stock is comfortable to hold and the rifle is well balanced, even with all the extra treats on it, it's still a comfortable rifle to hold. Um, and it has a smooth shot cycle at a cock, but it feels a little bit harsh. After you've been using it for several minutes, like it starts to feel a bit crunchy when you're cocking it. And I'm hoping that's just because it's new and that will go away eventually. But if not, I can always just put in a dropping kit or something like that to, to sort it out. So I'll give some pros and cons on the rifle if I may. Um, firstly, the first pro is the price. Obviously, it's, it's hell of a cheap, so you can buy one and have a decent rifle in your collection for a pretty affordable price. And secondly, is the, uh, the second pro is the looks. I think it is an attractive rifle. Not so much out of the box, but once you've got a scope on it and a silencer, I think it kind of just finishes it off. And the third pro is its wide uses. So, as I said, you can put it to a lot of practical different uses. Um, and fourth, fourth pro is is uh, ease of obtaining aftermarket parts, because it's such a, you know, mainstream rifle that's, it's been around for a long time. Like there's a lot of um, parts you can buy for it from, say, Rowan, Rowan Engineering, for example, or um, there's other places and that. But um, the fifth pro that I've got for it is the, the obviously the record trigger, even though it's like you know Virac's benchmark rifle. Like introduction rifle, They've, the specs that it's got on it are really good. And my sixth pro would be its weight, because it's a Springer, it's not very heavy, which is always appreciated in my books. And it also has a, uh, even though it's not that heavy, it does have a, a lack of um, hold sensitivity. So I've found myself shooting it from different, different positions and different grips and um, it still seems to put the pellet through the same hole. And granted, uh, my testing has only really been out to about 15 metres and the rifle can achieve much greater distances. It's still nice to see that it's not hold sensitive. And eighth pro would be that it's, it's a really well balanced rifle. As I said, even with all the extra treats on it, it's still a nice rifle to hold. And it's really well balanced still. And the fact that it comes with a rail and foresight and rear sight and everything so that it's, it doesn't have to have a scope on it, I think is good. And if you move it around, I'll just show you quickly. It's been a temp pro. I'll bring it up close. You can hear there's absolutely no rattle. And I like that in a Springer because quite often they will rattle when you move them around a lot. Um, I've got an Air Arms TX200 as you'll see from my previous videos and if you shake that around it does rattle quite a bit but with the 99 th that doesn't happen um, obviously 11th throw um, being it's, it's great German build quality and finish you know it's going to last you a long time if you look after it so that's always a nice peace of mind and I think this would be the 12th Pro, um, it's got three rester pin grooves in the in the scope rail, so that if you've got a scope mount with a rester pin, you can fix it all down tightly so the uh, the scope doesn't shift, which is always helpful with a Springer. Um, the thirteenth pro is that it's not pellet fussy either. Um, I did quite a lot of pellet testing with some big brands, and it seemed to get on with all of them pretty much. It was all tolerable, so. That was good as well. And then lastly, the 14th Pro is that it can be highly tuned. Um, there's a version of this rifle called the Imp that's made by Samwell Field Sports. There's a chap called Cy Pitaway who, who owns one of them rifles and um, a lot gets done to it and it completely changes the rifle. I'm quite happy to keep mine standard but it's nice to know that there's a potential there to do that. And just to give some cons on the rifle, because there is some, unfortunately. I like to try and give a few if I find any. 
its muzzle report is quite loud as you saw from the, the footage without a, a moderator on granted most of the noise comes from the action as with all springers but it is nice to have a moderator fitted so you're going to find yourself wanting to get one of them um, second con is it's, it's a compact rifle in a sense that it's the actions like low to the bottom of the the, the, sco uh, the stock sorry so when you fit when you're holding the rifle it feels snug but as you can see i'm having difficulty getting it all of in all of the rifle in shot and still be close enough for you to see some detail so it's not a particularly short rifle but it's still a nice one at that and straight out of the box my third con is um, the safety catch is really stiff to activate it comes on automatically which is nice but to, to, to activate it you have to really push it in and it makes quite a bit of a click and clunk noise so if you're using this rifle to hunt with um, you might want to sort that out because it could obviously scare off your potential targets and the fourth con is to cock it i don't know if this is the same for everybody else's version but for me um it's, it's quite difficult to cock like to to perform it is it's quite difficult and after so many you know hours or minutes of using it like it does start to ache like your arm and you'll know about it eventually and i think for it being a small springer um i was expecting it to be a lot easier to cock but Unfortunately, it's not. As I say, I don't know if that's just my version. And also, it has got a fair bit of recoil. Sometimes when I've been shooting it off of sticks, if they weren't quite grounded properly, the sticks have rocked during the recoil because of the, or because of it. So you look at it and you think it's not going to have much of a kick. You'd be wrong. <clears throat> so to conclude. Overall, I'd highly recommend this rifle to anyone above the age of 16 because, as I said, it is quite difficult to cock and for, for that reason I think you'd want to be a bit older than 16 to use it. And I honestly can't see why I've waited this long to get one. I've recommended it to people for a long time and yet I'd never used one and I finally picked myself one up and I'm really happy that I have. Um, I'm really happy with the rifle um, and I'll be using it a hell of a lot more than some of my others just because of how tidy it is and easy it will be to just take it out of the case and enjoy it it's a springer so there's no faff involved and because it's cheap i'm not worried about knocking it or anything so that's my review of the hw99 s um i hope you found it enjoyable and informative and if you did like it please give the video a like and if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel Thanks very much for watching.